Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. They answer one of these tough questions that we oftentimes talk about. Will a man wait? Will a man wait? Now, what this is talking about, of course, is waiting until marriage to have sex. And 90% of women say no. 90% of women say no. There have been women who have waited and a man waited on them, but that percentage is very small. The reason why 90% of women say no is because a lot of women have been left by a man who refused to wait. Also because probably 100% of women who have dated have been tried by a man sexually without giving him any signs that she was anywhere near remotely interested in sleeping with him. She was tried by him. So that gives the impression that a man will not wait until marriage for sex. <laughs> and that is a lie. A man will wait. A man who is worth marrying, and that's probably 50 to 60% of men, a man who is worth marrying, a man who is also heterosexual, a man waiting don't mean that he don't like women, a heterosexual man who is confident, who is manly, who is worth marrying will wait if that is the woman's requirement. If it is a woman's choice, if the woman chooses that she wants to wait until marriage and the man she is dealing with is meant to be her husband. See, that's the key right now. That's the key. It's a lot of women who look like the back of an outhouse to a man. If that man think you look like the bottom of a 57 Chevy, then he does not care about you waiting and you want to wait. He don't care nothing about you. He don't care nothing about your feelings. And so this is where this narrative has been created that a man won't wait. But what you got to realize is a man already waited half his life. To have sex because a man really ain't going to be able to have no sex before 13. But yet that thing been standing up probably since 8, 9. And he been feeling that. He been standing up. Then he probably figure out what it is around some guys as young as 5 years old learn what sex is. But on average, it's going to be around 10 to 13. And then he's going to be curious. And a lot of guys don't get to dive in nothing till between the ages of 18 and 22. To be honest with you. Like I, I remember working with guys who was star athletes between the ages of 15 and 18. And majority of them have never had never been with a young lady. Even though they were star athletes, the man on campus had never laid down with a young lady. Just didn't have the time, didn't have the place, didn't have the opportunity. Didn't really have the desire. And so, just in their mind. So what women don't understand is that that ain't hard for a man to do. Men go through bouts of abstinence on their own. Look up on YouTube the what they call the no fap and they call and semen retention. Search that on YouTube and you're gonna see countless men doing their little journey, they little thing of semen retention and no fap. I don't really know what the fap mean, but basically what they saying though, they not having no type of release. And they just be sitting there loving it, enjoying it. And that's what women got to realize and understand. It This ain't rocket science. This ain't rocket science. A man will wait. So 
if that is your choice and that's what you choose to do and you like this man, you think he's smart, you think he's handsome, you think he whatever, don't feel like you got to get on your bike. Do not feel like you got to get on your bike. Stay off your bike. And yes, he may try you. Yes, he may tempt you. Yes, he may wine you and dine you. I mean, your favorite red wine, your favorite playlist, your favorite restaurant. He might rub feet. He might suck toes, fingers, kiss on ear and neck. It don't matter. You got to stand on what you stand on, know what you are committed to, and just express to him, hey, that's not somewhere I'm trying to go. I'm not ready for that, and I don't want to be ready for that. And express to him you want to get to know him. You want to know that your relationship is the priority and not sexual chemistry and sexual interaction. You want to know that y'all could be best friends. You want to know that y'all could be true lovers by making love to the mind and not just to the body. You want to know that your mind matter to him more than your body matter to him and express that to him. And I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of people don't realize this, don't understand this. But to a mature man today, yes, it might annoy him a little bit. Yes, he might not understand it all the way. But it's going to be so different, so rare, so unique, so peculiar. He's going to be intrigued by that. And he's going to want that over an easy, loose booty woman. Any day of the week and twice on Sunday, he's going to want you more than any other type of woman. Because, men, we want exclusive. We want exclusive things. We want an exclusive watch or we want an exclusive car. Or we want an exclusive job. We want an exclusive woman. Men don't want just run of the mill. Everybody could say they done had it. Everybody say they got it. Everybody done been there, done that. That ain't that ain't what a man want. Even though he working for the average, meaning he don't he's not processing that him trying to sleep with you is him proving to himself that if you asleep with him so fast, then who won't you sleep with? He don't realize when he's doing it that that's what he's showing himself. But he's doing that to find out otherwise. So when he find out, oh, wow, she's going to make me work? Wow, I'm breaking bread. I'm paying for the whole meal. I'm getting everything she like. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And she still ain't coming off that thing. So then he's going to be like, whoa, I got somebody that's rare. I got somebody that's top shelf. I got somebody that a lot of men done tried and done fail. I got somebody that if I got to work for, if we get married and things ain't going right, I know she not just finna be up under another man because it take time and it take work. And that's what that abstinence shows that man, that you wife ready. You wife material, but when you want to bust it wide open, you hot and ready like Lil Caesars, then he like, okay, you for everybody then. Everybody done had you. And then if he meets you and he have you on the first day, now he is under the impression that 365 men can have you in one year because he had you in the first day. If he had you in the first week, he going to assume that 52 men can have you in a year. If he had you in the first month, he going to assume that 12 men a year you sleep with. First two months, that's six men a year. First three months, that's four men a year you sleep with. First five, what, four, men, four months, that's three men a year. Five months, that's two and a half men a year. If it take him six months, now he know... Okay, she she gon she gonna run by two men a year. Cross that six month mark, seven months. Now he know at your mics you one man a year. At one man a year, not for a God fearing, Holy Ghost filled, sanctified man, that still ain't good. 
because you're supposed to be abstinent all the way. But if he ain't abstinent, then he ain't judging you like that. But at that seven month mark, if he had to wait seven months, now he know at the max you, you running one man a year. So at that point, it's it's gonna be hard to, for him to see look down on you. So it's like if you if your little hot tail can't make it until marriage, at least make it seven months. And I'm not condoning your sin now. You're gonna have to answer to God. You might have a child out of wedlock. You might catch a you might catch HIV, HIV. You might get general rewards. You might get syphilis. And so when you sin, it love and war. It's all fair game. So don't have your legs open. Then get mad when you when you get up with something you can't get rid of. Now you gotta walk with it with that same pride that you got down there in that bed with. The same vigor and happiness and solitude and servitude you got in that bed with, get right on up with that general wards and have your head high. Hold your head high with them wards. That syphilis, that health, them herpes, the gonorrhea, the chlamydia, the trick, the trite. Hold your head high because you got down there happy, happy go lucky, loose booty. Get right on up with it and wear it proudly. And if you don't want to wear it proudly, then keep your legs closed. Keep your legs closed till you know who you got. You know what you're dealing with. He show you he want to marry you. And he take you serious. He make you his wife. Then, now, that chance, whatever chance you taking now, now it's well worth it. He done earned it. He done earned it. If stuff go wrong, if it don't work out, y'all get a divorce, you can't be mad because you did it the right way. But if you take shortcuts and you get cut short, don't call me crying and complaining. Talk to the Lord. Hey, this Tony Gaston. God bless you. Remember, yes, he will wait. Tony, why you ain't wait? Because that wasn't my wife's requirement. You don't get what you worth. You get what you negotiate. You don't get what you worth. You get what you demand. That My wife wasn't in that stage of life. She ain't had nobody. We didn't have YouTube with somebody like me sitting there talking. We just had our parents preaching to us. And all everybody rebelled on your parents. We just had the, regular, the Holy Bible. But wasn't nobody out there to reinforce it. So we all sin and fall short. So we was in that space. But when you got the Holy Bible, you got your parents, you got wisdom, not understanding, and you got people like me that's putting this in your head every day. Now, you got less excuses. Yeah, you still imperfect. Yeah, you still can fall, but you got less excuses because you've been worn over and over and over and over and over in multiple different ways. And so people try to, oh, Tony, you making excuses for it. you and your wife being in fornication. Y'all knew right from wrong. Yeah, we all know right from wrong, but not on top of right from wrong. Now, you got a million life coaches on YouTube that we didn't have. You got a million self-help books that we didn't have. There was no black authors that we could relate to when we was dating. But now it's a whole bunch of us. Now it's a whole bunch of us on here. Online courses, YouTube videos, one-on-one -on -one sessions. None of that exists. When I was in the dating field, that reinforcement, those reminders outside of your parents and what you already know. But that reinforcement and reminder, that stuff wasn't out there. But now it's out there. So now you know better, so do better. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. We'll talk soon.